Croesawi Baub, Imbrifio and Noediadai as Butti Noyath Neville. Welcome everybody to our briefing on changes to Neville Hall Hospital. Before I begin, my name is Adrian Osborne. I work in the communications team at Poets Teaching Health Board and just wanted to provide a brief technical introduction. We're using Microsoft Teams today. This means that not only can you watch the meeting, but you can also take part. You'll see that on your screen, there's a tab with a question mark on it. And that's our question screen, which allows you to post questions during the meeting. And later on in the session, we'll provide the opportunity to ask those questions to Carol Schillerbeer, our chief executive, who will shortly be providing a presentation about the hospital changes. Now, please accept our apologies that we might not have the opportunity to answer all questions uh, within the session today, but we will aim to answer them after today's session. And today's briefing is also being recorded. Don't worry, you as the attendees aren't visible in that. It will record me and Carol and other features of the um, uh, of, of the meeting today. Um, and that means also that the meeting will be available for you to watch on YouTube after the event and on our website. So that means you'll be able to share it with other colleagues who haven't been able to join us today. So thank you for joining and the briefing will now begin. Hello everyone, uh, a very good evening to you and uh, thank you so much first of all for taking the time to join us on this briefing uh, around Neville Hall uh, Hospital. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Carol Schillerbeer and I'm the Chief Exec in Powys Teaching Health Board. Um, I do hope that you're all managing uh, to keep safe and well. So we're going to run through a few slides I'll just give you an overview if, if that's OK um, uh, around the changes that are happening and then be very happy to take any uh, questions or hear any comments that you wish to make. So um, we'll uh, get this well underway now and we'll really start with um, some of the background as to uh, why Neville Hall Hospital is indeed uh, changing. So um, the, uh, the, the first uh, slide talks about something called clinical futures and uh, I recognise that uh, many uh, town community councillors may already be very familiar with the Gwent uh, Clinical Futures Programme. It has been running for a very long time. Um, back in uh, 2007 was the consultation for the future shape of hospitals and the wider health services in the Gwent area. And following that consultation, um, the uh, Naran Bevan Health Board developed a case for a specialist and critical care centre in Cumbran. Um, that was approved by government and is now uh, known as the Grange University Hospital. You may see it referred to as GUH. Um, the other element of the Clinical Futures Plan was to refocus some of the other hospitals as a uh, local general hospitals and for those uh, colleagues who know a little bit uh, more about the Gwent area, uh, Asputi Astradvaur in Kafili is one of those and the plan is to move to both Royal Gwent and the Neville Hall Hospital uh, as local uh, general hospitals. And as you're aware, the Inara and Bevan uh, Health Board provides health services in all of the Gwent area and that's the five uh, county boroughs uh, that we've listed on the slides here. So that's a bit about clinical futures. The next slide really focuses on something called the South Wales programme and this is again uh, for a couple of years ago um, and um, back in 2013 there was very, some very genuine concern that hospital services were spread too thinly across South Wales. Uh, there's simply not enough uh, medical staff in particular to support quite so many um, uh, centres and therefore uh, a lot of work took place to have a look to see what is the most sustainable uh, model as, uh, as we move forward and that programme approved a five site model. Uh, that's the University Hospital of Wales Cardiff, that was a fixed point, Morriston Hospital in Swansea as a fixed point, the Grange University Hospital Cumbran, it hadn't been built then, but it, there was clear commitment to it. 
Um, and then there were two out of a number of other options. And um, we worked very hard in Powys at the time to ensure that the strategic importance of Prince Charles Hospital was understood by people who perhaps, you know, were more familiar with the South Wales corridor and the M4 corridor. Because without Prince Charles Hospital being one of the five, there was an element of potentially not having a district general hospital from Wrexham, uh, Wrexham Myler, all the way down then to either the Grange in uh, Cumbran or the Royal Glamorgan Hospital in Llantrisant. So we all worked and communities worked so hard to support this, uh, to put Prince Charles in that picture. Um, and um, uh, we as a health board endorsed the recommendation to support those five key sites uh, across uh, South Wales and for the population of South Powys as well. Um, we made that decision back in 2014. The third element of um, uh, the background uh, really relates to uh, our own strategy here in Powys. Um, and I, I know that uh, people who are uh, participating uh, and listening in to this presentation will be familiar, I hope at least, with the health and care strategy that the health board and the local authority developed together. And that was together with the third sector and uh, other community groups. And this strategy was the first health and care joint strategy in Wales. And it, it really looks to try to provide as much care closer to home as possible. So it really supports our ambition that we start well, live well and age well in Powys. So the, that's the third element of the background I wanted to share with you. In terms of moving into the, um, uh, the, the next key element for me to share with you relates really to, so what's happened as a result of all of that and where are we heading, uh, heading now? So uh, the, next, uh, the next slide, uh, I think, uh, will just illuminate for us the issues that none of us could have anticipated really at the turn of this year. So the impact of COVID-19 has been huge on all of our lives. Um, and in particular, um, the NHS, particularly during the first wave, had a really hard experience around uh, ensuring that uh, we could cope with the demands uh, that were being placed on it uh, with this very new and very aggressive virus. And in terms of an R and Bevan University Health Board, they were at the centre really of the, the very first wave and had a huge amount of difficulty trying to maintain services both at the Royal Gwent Hospital and at Neville Hall Hospital. And indeed, some of those services were moved on to a single site because of uh, the fragility of trying to manage them through the pandemic. So an R and Bevan uh, Health Board took a, a look at what uh, preparations they could put in place for both the second wave and the COVID winter and discussed these with Welsh Government. They have decided that they would look to open the Grange University Hospital rather than in spring 2021, open it in November 2020. And that is really to enable them to bring together services such as intensive care, uh, emergency uh, medicine and other specialties where they're trying to run two services. They'll run it as one from the Grange University Hospital. So from the 17th of November, the Grange University Hospital will become the main location in Gwent for accident and emergency services, also known as emergency medicine for paediatric services and for maternity and neonatal services. And they're all on the consultant led 24 seven basis. So these services will transfer from the Neville Hall Hospital and the Royal Gwent uh, Hospital. Now we recognise with the best laid plans um, and Aaron Bevan are trying to work to the 17th of November, but this second wave is um, coming uh, further and faster 
uh, at us each day and um, uh, there may be some modification of the opening uh, date but at this stage we are looking to work to the opening of the 17th of November but some things may go just uh, a few days earlier. So it's going to be really important to be clear about the role of Neville Hall Hospital after the Grange University Hospital opens and from the 17th of November Neville Hall will focus on general and routine care. Um, there will be a minor injuries unit, a medical assessment unit, and we're just confirming the hours of opening of that. The day surgery unit, there will be rehabilitation and therapy. There will be diagnostics, so x-rays and MRI and CT scans. There'll be outpatient clinics. There'll be an enhanced frailty unit. There will be inpatient beds. There will be a children's outpatient appointment and there will be a midwifery led birthing unit and maternity outpatients. So that's what will be at the hospital in Neville Hall. What won't be there will be that consultant led A&E over 24 hour period. There won't be inpatient surgery. There won't be obstetrics, so consultant led births and there won't be a paediatric uh, ward uh, either. Um, and um, uh, the key thing for, for us to share at this stage, and I will come on to, to it, is really the focus for us is to ensure that the residents of South Powys, Mid and South Powys, can access in, uh, when they, it is urgent and emergency care, their nearest hospital. And so you'll see on the slides that we have illustrated those hospitals there. So Prince Charles Hospital in Merthyr Tydfil, Hereford County Hospital in Hereford, Neville Hall in uh, Abergavenny, um, uh, but they, as I've just explained, not the full range of services there. Glanguilly Hospital in Carmarthen, Morriston and Singleton Hospitals in Swansea, and Bronglais Hospital in Aberystwyth. So, um, if Neville Hall Hospital is currently the nearest hospital, then this will change on the 17th of November for the following services. Consultant-led A&E services, consultant-led maternity services and consultant-led children's services. So, um, and as we, uh, as I explained a little bit earlier around the South Wales programme, a lot of the work that took place at the time on travel times still hold true today, uh, particularly with the improvements on the Heads of the Valleys Road, that Prince Charles Hospital is now the nearest hospital for most residents of the south of Powys. So I'm um, just going to move to the next slide and because I really do want to stress this is about emergency and urgent care. So this is about uh, what, what people do uh, in these circumstances. So the 999 service, of course, is the service for life and limb threatening illnesses and injuries. And uh, I would just stress how um, important out of hospital care is in relation to 999. Um, and you may know that there's been significant investment in the air ambulance type services that support uh, Wales and Powys has got a really good uh, fair share, more than that, more than the fair share of that service um, for our residents. Uh, dial 991, nine, uh, dial nine, 111, start that again, dial 111 when it is urgent but it isn't life-threatening and that's about information and advice and the expansion of 111 has been continuing. And then from the 17th of November, consultant-led A&E departments for the South and Mid Powys residents uh, are listed there and I hope I won't go back through them but you'll be able to see them. The nurse-led minor injuries unit, of course, we have one at Brecon and at Llandrin Dodwells and at Estragunlais and at Neville Hall. So there is a good network there of minor injuries units. We do hope that people will use the Brecon one and or the Llandrin Dodd one uh, wherever possible. Um, and um, uh, we look into continue to enhance uh, our, our services there. And then I just want to um, pause for a moment on children. So caring for children with illnesses and injuries, and this has been one of our key um, focal points really, because uh, as a parent myself, I recall the days when my 
children were young and um, they would have temperatures and, and all sorts and you'd think, well, they're really not, not so well. You really do need to know what you do uh, in that circumstance. So we've been very clear here that if your child is under two and it's a serious illness or injury, you believe it to be serious, dial 999 or go directly to your closest A&E. And the same advice for age uh, over uh, two and over. If it's a minor injury, um, dial 111 or go to the A&E. Or if it, uh, the child is over two, two and over, the dial 111 or go to the minor injuries unit. Just to say that Neville Hall, they will uh, take children aged one and over. So just moving to the next slide, um, I love a good map. So uh, here, here we are because we recognise how how complex the pathways are for people in Powys. Um, we're often the most complicated uh, county with lots of different routes to different uh, hospitals. So we really hope that this map will will help. And you can see there that the red dots show the A&Es. Um, and the uh, orange dots show the minor injuries units. So the hospitals with accident and emergency units, you can see in at Merthyr in particular, becomes a quite a key feature for the south of Powys, as does Hereford um, and also Swansea. And then hospitals with minor injury departments um, within 10 miles of Powys are there in the, in the orange. Um, and of course, we've got one uh, in Brecon, and we've got one in Llandrindod, and we've got one in Astragandlis. So I just want to spend a moment about maternity care because um, our maternity care has received over the years um, really positive uh, feedback from a wide range of professional groups, from Welsh Government, uh, from inspectors, and of course from, from women themselves and their families. And so we continue to offer the midwife-free led home births and midwife-led birth centres in Brecon, Llandrindod Wells, Knight and Llanidloes, Newtown and Welshpool. So that remains unchanged and we're really keen to support women who are able to have uh, their, their baby in a lower risk um, uh, setting in one of our birth centres or in their own home. Neville Hall Hospital after the 17th will no longer provide consultant-led births um, and we're looking actually from the 10th of November. That's just a little bit earlier that I was referring to earlier, but it will be a mirror free led birth centre. However, for women already booked with uh, an Arabevan University Health Board, we do recommend the continuity of care. So for ladies who may be four, five, six, seven, eight and a half months pregnant to continue their continuity of care with their midwife and their obstetrician. Um, and uh, the other thing for, for me to say, in an obstetric emergency, of course, the paramedics know exactly uh, what to do and they will take uh, the woman uh, to the nearest emergency uh, hospital that provides obstetric led care. So um, there are a range of other hospitals, of course, that continue to uh, provide consultant led maternity services and we've got them listed uh, listed there. Just moving into the uh, the next slide, um, and this is part of where we hope that you will be able to help us as town and community councillors in terms of engagement and consultation. As you can imagine, bringing forward the opening of uh, such a large hospital uh, four months early, and to be honest, we only had probably about eight to ten weeks notice of this. Um, uh, it, there's been a huge amount of work. And our one big area that we've been really focused on is how we engage and communicate and how we get the messages out to the people of South Powys. So uh, you just met Adrian uh, a little earlier. Adrian's been leading this work for us and we've got some additional expertise to help us with the amount of engagement uh, and communication we need to do uh, in readiness for uh, the 17th of November and then and then beyond. So the focus of our engagement communication uh, is to help people to understand the best choices for caring for their sick child in an emergency. You can see that's the top of the list for us. Um, it's really, really important. 
helping people to make the best choices for themselves or their dependent adults in an emergency and when it's urgent but not an emergency and there's a, a judgment about that all of the time and we recognize that uh, informing people of their nearest a and e and um, and those changes helping people to understand those changes about birth options as well. The really important thing is planned care. So where you get an outpatient appointment or you've been referred for a scan or something like that, that's unchanged because your GP or your uh, another healthcare professional will arrange that uh, for, for you and for people. So planned care is unchanged. We're also um, uh, aiming to share information about location and directions of A&E and maternity hospital for South and Mid Powys. And you can see just by the list of the hospitals, that's a, a tricky thing to do because it's not just one place for everyone. Uh, there are some, um, some nuances depending on uh, where people live. And then, of course, it's a great opportunity to give people some information about where they can go uh, for information and support. And there's a wide range of, um, uh, of mechanisms uh, online and uh, in person where um, uh, advice, uh, information and support can be secured. The next slide um, just gives a little bit more detail about how we're trying to communicate uh, as well as the what we were trying to communicate. So uh, household drop information about the changes uh, is is happening. We've been working on that now for for a few weeks and um, that information will be heading out to people's doorsteps. Um, uh, very soon. It's uh, just off to the, for the print run and uh, then the distribution. We'll also be using social media and we're ideally tapping into local organisations, so community groups, hopefully yourselves uh, as community and town councils who will be able to help us to spread the word. We recognise that there are some people who may have language or format um, requirements and uh, we're going to do our very best to reach out to uh, all of those people wherever we possibly can. And then we're going to keep going because uh, although this changes on the 17th of uh, November, we know that it will uh, take some time for everyone to be uh, aware. So we will we will keep going. And then in early 2021, um, we aim to produce the localised materials and uh, I have seen some of these already. It talks about the local area, so My Healthy Brecon or My Healthy Estrogen Lice um, and uh, that, that more local information with local nuances will, uh, will come and, and follow, uh, follow in due course. And that is the run through. So I, I recognise there's a lot of information I was trying to impart there. I hope you have found that helpful. As Adrian said at the top of the presentation, the presentation is being recorded so people can go back over it, see the slides, hear my explanation. And um, uh, and of course, you'll be able to get in touch uh, if there are any queries. So at this stage, I'm going to um, just hand uh, back to Adrian because Adrian's going to tell me if there are any questions uh, and if there aren't I might have to sing or something like that but um, I'm, I'm sure there will be so uh, Adrian if I hand back to you. Thanks, Thanks very, very much, much uh, uh, Carol. Carol. Um, um, so, so we've, we've had, had some questions, questions in, in this evening this and also and I had some questions, some questions submitted in advance well. as well. So first of all, from Gareth Jones from Abaradu Community Council, just south of Belth, which areas of POIS will patients be taken to the A&E department in the new Grange Hospital? From our area of POIS, patients currently go to Hereford, Merthyr Tydfil or Neville Hall. And if taken by ambulance, this can take anything up to two hours from the time of the 999 call to arrival at A&E. So I understand that the Grange would require additional travel time, which could take it up to nearly three hours from the 999 call to arrive at the Grange. 
Thanks very much, uh, Adrian. Uh, thank you very much, Gareth. It's a really, really key question. And I think you outlined in your question the complexity of our geography. And probably um, just south of Bilf is the area that probably could go a couple of different uh, a different ways. The, the, the thing to say is in an emergency, in a 999, um, uh, the call handlers are assessing straight away as soon as they, they pick up the call, they're assessing the best vehicle, the level of seriousness, etc. Um, uh, they then dispatch the ambulance to the um, to the patients and to their, their location. And it is at that point that they then look to confirm the severity um, of, of the illness. Um, there is something called a Welsh Ambulance Services um, clinical protocol so that the paramedics on the ground will do an assessment and they will take the patient to the nearest appropriate hospital. So you're quite right for for many people, just depending sometimes it's just a couple of miles here or there, whether that would be Hereford or whether that would be uh, Prince Charles. And I mentioned those two because it is most likely to be those. Um, uh, just moving the geography a little bit more to the left on the map, we start to move towards the uh, uh, the Carmarthen and the, the Morriston end. But generally, I think we're talking about Prince Charles Hospital and, and Hereford. And we've taken a lot of time working with WAS now very intensively to be really clear about their response. And they are very, very keen to ensure that they make the clinical decision on the ground and then they take to the, put the person to the most appropriate. So it um, is not uh, that the Grange University Hospital would be uh, the nearest hospital for very many people um, and, and certainly the south of Bilf that that wouldn't be the case because as you've pointed out that would be considerably longer than the other district general hospitals that I've mentioned so I hope that helps uh, Gareth uh, just to uh, to give a little bit more uh, detail on that. Thanks very much Carol and a follow-up question from Gareth as well which is will the A&E and the Grange be blue light only? Uh, yeah, th th thanks. Thanks very much. So what, what Anara and Bev and our uh, health board are really trying to do is not um, have everyone travelling to the one one site. So um, their service um, pattern, it, what they're looking for is if there is a minor injury, you would go to one of the local general hospitals. But where there is an urgent or emergency situation, very much as I just described in terms of the ambulance, the 999, then uh, that, uh, that situation is likely to lead people in Gwent to the, uh, to the Grange University Hospital. Of course, when we look at the Heads of the Valleys geography, and um, you know my, my grandparents grew up in uh, the Ebbuvale uh, area and uh, Ebbuvale Brimauer is actually closer to Prince Charles Hospital so in an urgent emergency situation the ambulance crews would make the clinical decision about where the best um, route to you know, where the best most appropriate uh, district general hospital is so they would likely to go to Prince Charles as well and of course the heads of the valleys road has had investment government investment so uh, it is a, um, a a smoother and uh, swifter journey. Thanks very much Carol. Uh, our next question is an anonymous one. Uh, will access to medical records for those who've been seen in Hereford improve? Residents have reported difficulties with access to medical records held in the Poet Health Board area. Yeah, thank, thanks so much for this question. And um, uh, I can understand that you may well have had some experience or someone you know has had that experience. Um, well, I'd say a couple of things on that. The, the first thing is that um, uh, in Wales, the um, the medical records, if you like, the, the health record system is joining up or almost all of the time now. So we can see those records uh, where, wherever somebody is having uh, care and treatment. Uh, they, they're looped back into Palace. However, the cross border, both the Hereford and the Shrewsbury and Telford, if we're in uh, Montgomeryshire, um, that has been more challenging. 
So we are currently working with the NHS Wales Informatics Service. They provide the information service and the, the technical support across Wales to see how we can overcome that uh, between the Wales and the system in England. The downside is there is not one single system in England that you can just sort of plug the two in together. Each trust in England has their own system and it's different. So it has to be built uh, from from scratch. So we're really aware of uh, of that issue. We're working hard on it now because we recognise in particular where um, more remote care is happening, uh, be it digital care. You know, your consultant might be in Hereford, uh, your, your GP or, your, you know, you may be trying to connect to them from within Powys. Um, and uh, we would need the things to join up more effectively. So we're very actively working on that now and we recognise that that is a problem we need to solve together with our colleagues in England. But thanks ever so much for, for the question. OK, I'm now moving to some questions we had via email in advance. And if any other people watching today want to post their questions in the Q&A, please do so that we can pose those uh, to Carol. But we had some questions in advance from people who weren't able to join us this evening. The first was, we've heard that there are plans to expand the air ambulance further, including the time of operation. Is, is that the case and are you able to update us on that? Yeah, lovely. Thanks. Thanks very much um, indeed. And we know that for a county such as Powys, having um, the additional uh, benefit of having an air ambulance service uh, is really, really important. Um, uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, the Emergency Medical Retrieval Service, EMERTS, was developed and um, uh, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And I've met some patients who have had the benefit of really swift emergency treatment where you've got the consultant on the on in the in the ambulance in the air ambulance in the helicopter and they are landing in Powys and they are supporting people and I am quite clear that they're saving lives but that's only operated certain hours so across Wales all the health boards um, they get together and plan these services and we've planned the expansion of that that service is now starting to expand right the way across Wales there were some patches in North Wales particularly that weren't covered. Um, we're looking for that to now be a comprehensive 24-7 service across Wales. Um, and um, the report, I always look at the reports from, from EMERTS and uh, I can uh, say to you that uh, patients, people in Powys are served very well by this service. Uh, we have more uh, people per head of population than most other health boards who, who benefit from that. So I think that's a fantastic investment for our, our county. So I, I am really pleased about that. It gives me a chance as well, Adrian, just on the back of that question, and I don't know if somebody else might have asked this question, right? well, what happens? Where will somebody go if it's a major trauma situation? So um, for the south of Powys, mid and south Powys now, the new major trauma centre has now opened in Cardiff. So that opened at the beginning of September um, and that has really sorted out a problem that we had in Powys where if you lived in the north of Powys and had a, a major trauma, major road traffic accident or a major accident that resulted in trauma, in the north of Powys you'd have gone to Stoke and in the south of Powys you'd have probably gone to the nearest A&E whereas those with very serious trauma will now go, now go directly to the specialist unit in Cardiff. And uh, I know that in the first couple of weeks of um, uh, it being operational, we had a number of uh, Powys residents uh, use that service already. So again, fantastic development for us. So I, I've answered a question that wasn't posed there, Adrian, but I hope that anyone looking in and, and listening to this will find both of those answers helpful. Thank you, Carol. Um, and uh, apologies, I forgot to mute my mic a little bit there. And so if people heard the, the rustic noises of horses in the background, I apologise for that. But a, a true Powys experience today. Um, we've uh, actually got a really helpful follow up question there from uh, Gareth Jones. Um, so are the air ambulances going to be 100% funded by NHS funds or do we continue to fundraise for them? 
Yeah, that, that's a really great question, Gareth, because I've got to be honest, I, I you know, when we were looking at the work uh, of the Air Ambulance um, and EMERT, um, I was very conscious that there's a huge amount of fundraising that goes on and I see the the, the shops and the, the centres and uh, in fact I've linked with the people who run the Air Ambulance charity, uh, myself personally and they're fantastic people um, and because there's been quite a big question here about whether the public should you know fund uh, uh, or where the government should fund you know and um, the Air Ambulance charity themselves they, they believe that they really do feel that, you know, they have a contribution to make um, and that they are, uh, they don't want the public sector to take, take it over. So it is very much a partnership. So they will, um, they will provide some of the funding. It's a phenomenal setup. I've, I've seen it, uh, the, the, the background to it. Um, and that is um, then, you know, supported by government money, uh, which comes through the health board and uh, and into the, the service. Um, if anyone uh, participating or listening um, to the presentation has been a member of the Community Health Council, um, you may well recall that the uh, Welsh Air Ambulance uh, team came and presented and uh, it's it's so inspiring and they were able to answer some of these types of questions and put their put their views across there so no there is still a public role uh, to to play in that gareth and um uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity just to flag as well how great their their work is and, and how grateful we all are for that contribution Thanks very much, Carol. Um, another question via email here, uh, which is probably the question you might expect, which is why don't we have an A&E in Powys? Yeah, th thanks. Thanks very much. When I first came to Powys quite a long time ago now, we used to get this question an awful lot and um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging one um in in some regards but a straightforward one in others so if i deal with the the challenging one first of all um you know the the key the key thing for running uh, an a and e service is you've got to plan on having a lot of people that will use it the reason the south wales program uh, was um uh, was such an important development program was there were so many A and E's across South Wales, fantastic for people, you know, going to A and E, but very, very difficult to get the right level of workforce and specialist expertise for everything and anything that might come to an, an A and E. Uh, in my earlier clinical days, I worked in Cardiff Royal Infirmary, and uh, I also covered uh, A and E. And the, the teams, they were expected to deal with absolutely everything and anything. And the evidence is saying that you really do need to have 24-7 um, experts as part of the, the service. And therefore, to plan and be able to sustain that, that needs to be on a much larger population base. So our population base of 135-ish thousand, I know it keeps uh, moving about a bit, is simply not big enough to have our, our own a and &E. And the other uh, simple uh, element on, on this one would be, where would we put it that is convenient enough for people to have traveled to, even if we could sustain one? Because we know that if you live in, uh, in Knighton, uh, you're closer to, to Hereford, um, or maybe equidistant if we were to put it in the middle of the patch, but then if you lived in Brecon, you're probably closer to Prince Charles Hospital, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I hope that helps to try to get across the reasons why we don't have an accident and emergency uh, department. They are really very, very um, uh, expert, top of the scale expert uh, these days. I've just talked about major trauma, for example. You have to be able to look after lots of complexity. I think our minor injuries units um, provide a really good service. I think there's potentially more that we could do and we're looking at that. Um, and can we make sure we've got more access to diagnostics, so x-rays and, and those sorts of things. So we'd like to do more 
but we just simply wouldn't have the, um, the critical mass of the population to provide a full uh, accident and emergency uh, unit or hospital. Thank you, Adrian. Thanks very much, Carol. Um, I've got uh, one further question here from uh, from the emails, which was we've heard reports that there are plans to expand the cancer services available at Neville Hall. Is this the case and are you able to update us on that? Yeah, thank you uh, very much indeed. Um, so this is where we are and I think it's a really good development for the people of, of South Powys. So we know that Valindra in Cardiff is the cancer centre for the south and southeast of Wales and we'll all know people who have used the fantastic services of, of Valindra but it's a long way when you're you know you're not well and you're having to undergo treatment. So there's a couple of things that we're trying to do working with other organisations in South and Southeast uh, Wales. The first thing is wherever we possibly can, we would like to try to give more chemotherapy closer to home. Now, some of these are specialist drugs and they're quite toxic. And so, you know, at this stage, uh, we will always be a little bit cautious on what we can do. But that is our ambition about care closer to home. But in terms of radiotherapy, there is a business case at the moment that was just coming to, uh, to health boards for agreement to have a radiotherapy unit at Neville Hall Hospital. That would be tremendous, I think, for the population of Mid and South Powys who ordinarily would have travelled to Valindra to have a much shorter travel uh, journey and, uh, and we hope a much better uh, patient experience as well of their services. So we're looking at the business case. We are supportive of it. So we hope that we can give that the, the thumbs up or the green light, whichever you'd like to call it. Um, and then uh, Valindra and Neville Hall and, and Aaron Bevan will work very quickly to try and get all of that in, in place. Um, so that would be a great development. Um, uh, and, and hopefully that's helpful for everyone to know uh, about that uh, that new service. Excellent. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, so we are just about out of questions, but we've got some comments and statements in the, the sidebar here, which I'll share. Um, so uh, Gareth Jones saying, I understand the reason for fewer and more skilled ANEs, but we do need to have better response times from the ambulance service. Waiting an hour or more is, is too long. And he says it's a statement and not a question. Um, Gareth also adds, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a trustee of the Bracken Trust and I understand what the air ambulance people are, are saying. Um, and on that note, uh, I'd just like to, to thank you, Gareth, and the Bracken Trust for everything that you do as well, because that's such a valued and valuable uh, charity and organisation within Powys as well. Um, we've had thank you, really appreciate the comprehensive answer regarding records and thank you to the answers to my questions. And so those are the last of the questions we've had in tonight. So perhaps, Carol, if you want to make some closing comments. Lovely. Well, the, the first thing for me to say is um, uh, thank you for those who have uh, tuned in. Uh, this is a very different way of, of working. We're all having to adapt uh, in this uh, in this environment. So thank you for taking the time uh, to do that. Um, uh, thank you to those who are uh, maybe catching up afterwards who weren't able to join us. I do hope that the presentation and the question and answer session has been helpful for you. Please do get in touch if there's anything else that uh, we can uh, we can help to answer for you. Um, but I, I just want to say um, two things really. What, one is on the changing services um, uh, around the heads of the valleys. Uh, we're working really hard to ensure that we can manage this as smoothly as possible uh, for, for all of our population. And um, if there are things that you think that we can do better, please, please let us know. We will be uh, continuing to work beyond the opening date of Neville Hall Hospital to ensure those messages are out um, and that we can uh, keep supporting people in local communities through this winter and, uh, and obviously through the pandemic. That leads me to my second uh, final remark really, which is uh, about the environment in which we're operating in at the moment. Um, we're uh, a couple of days away from Welsh restrictions 
um, and whatever people's opinions, and there are lots of them, what is really clear is that people really value their, their NHS and uh, we're very grateful for the huge support that is given to the NHS by people in the community. Uh, we know people are passionate about it because we know in the first wave uh, people took extraordinary steps to both um, uh, isolate, to hand, hand wash, uh, to do all of the things, the, they isolate themselves from family members to protect each other and protect the NHS. And I'm sorry that we're having to ask for that to continue and and more of that as we go through the next few weeks. But uh, every action that is taken by someone in our community to support us, we are very, very grateful for and very thankful for. So um, I just wanted to make those remarks. And just as we finish, uh, Adrian, to uh, hope people are uh, able to keep safe and well uh, over the next uh, few weeks and months. And we are working uh, very hard uh, to get ready for a mass vaccination programme, which we hope will really help us all to get back to a life that is a, perhaps a bit more familiar and then learn to live with a hopefully much lower level of COVID into the future. So I'm um, very happy again to update people on our progress as we move through the next few months um, in that regard. So thank you very much, Adrian, for managing the session. I know that it's very much multitasking. Uh, we had the slides in the right order. We had the questions and the answers and, and uh, I'm very grateful to you for your support on that as well. So thank you very much, uh, Diochavar. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us.